Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, December 23rd. This is your end of day video. So we've got uh, one more day. We've got a half day tomorrow, so short and trading session. Uh, you know, probably you could expect uh, decent lower volumes, I would think, for tomorrow. Um, I think a lot of trading, you know, there's been a lot of things going on, uh, you know, a lot of crazy moves and definitely small cap land, momentum lands. And, um, you know, probably a little bit of a breather, I would think, that the market gets. But, you know, who knows? The way that this market has been going, it's been very hard to kind of make those predictions. Risk disclaimer in front of you. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not, getting, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Um, today was kind of like a little bit of an under-the-radar value day. I kind of um, caught that in the beginning of the day, just really um, was watching what bonds were doing. And I decided today that, um, you know, with this move in bonds, by the way, they did actually come back from the lows. But I played a little bit of JP Morgan um, today, you know, for a little bit of day trade. You know, it's kind of um, what I'm looking to do for, you know, while I think this market is, some areas of this market are a bit overbought, is to just kind of, you know, participate in a couple day trades. But um, let this market, you know, I'm, I'm fully at this point, um, wanting this market to kind of take a little bit of a pause. And um, so we'll see. I may not get that. This market may continue to, to kind of go up. But I think for now, uh, as I've talked about a couple times this week, just, you know, very pleased at the way 2020 has gone. And, um, you know, the, the month of December has been really good. So I'm kind of locking in gains for the for the month at this point. And, you know, that to me comes with, um, you know, a little bit of experience, you know, doing so and realizing that the risk reward ratio, um, you know, I think that there's a little bit more risk than there is, you know, reward with some of these moves. Um, you know, and if you're catching some of these moves with, with the SPACs and with the super high momentum names, you know, awesome, you know, and I'm, I'm all for that with the right position size, considering how fast some of these things are doing, are going. But, you know, we started to see some of these things kind of come down pretty quickly too. Not all, but, but a few of them, right? I talked about Fubo, uh, <laughs> Fubo, yes, Fubu. Um, you know, th so this is just a proxy, right? We talked about how this thing went straight up, and I, I did make a joke yesterday that I didn't think that they were curing cancer, so I didn't get while they were <laughs> while they were up so much. Well, you know, down fifteen percent today. Just really not easy to kind of short something like this because the uh, the calls and the puts are very expensive. I heard this morning that there's no borrow on this name, so you know that when that happens, when when brokerages are not providing any any um, locates to short shares um, that goes into the price of the put right so you know if you notice like why puts are so expensive in something like that it's because you can't short the shares right when when that when you're buying puts in something there there is a an underlying cost of how much it is um, to short the shares so um, the more expensive it is because what happens is the market makers need to need to hedge right if you're buying if there's a lot of puts and there's that ga you know could create that gamma move it's more and more you know makes it more and more expensive um, out there to put those hedges in place and and so on and so forth so that does get footed footed into the price of the um of the puts but anyway you know i've started to see a number of of these high momentum names um, come in pretty decently at the end of the day. NMDM, right? Everybody talking about the call volume in this thing today, um, you know, and the last couple days, but, you know, reversal bar. So again, this is, you know, just one name, but, um, you know, I think you're starting to see that in multiple high momentum areas is that, um, you know, some, some things are kind of showing a bit of a reversal bar. Now, what I would like, and again, you know, this comes with a little bit of experience too. If you, if you position right for this stuff, you're actually welcome a little bit of a pullback, you know, and I'll go through a, like a couple of my names that I like a lot, you know, like a square, well, square had a re, square was down 4.5%, but all in all, like, wouldn't that be great if Square kind of comes in here? Like, it would probably create another buying opportunity, you know, provided that it, it, it comes in here. And you could play a little bit of puts if, if you are okay with doing so. Um, you know, even though the name's in a, in, a, um, in a big uptrend. Again, not 
going crazy buying puts and things, but um, you know, there's some there are some opportunities when things revert back a little bit. Um, things do move a little bit faster up to the downside. So, uh, you know, try to stay open to those things. And, um, you know, I, again, like here at this point, I, I would be um, pretty pleased if there would be, um, you know, a pullback in, in some areas of the market. Um, and it's just, you know, I think that the way you kind of have to go back to right now that, you know, the Fed still has this market's back and so forth. So, you know, a, a little bit of a move down, I think would, would shake out the weak hands of the market in the market and it would kind of bring that this super hot uh, sediment that we've got in the market it would kind of bring that back into you know check that back into um into where it should be a little bit so that's kind of what i'm looking for and um yeah let's see oh there's a cloudera headline on the tape Let's see what this is. So anyway, that that's what I'm rooting for, and that's kind of how I'm positioned at this point. Cladera to buy 26 million shares from Intel. Huh? What's going on there? I'll just throw this in the uh, in the trading room. And um, you know, other things besides that, besides kind of wrapping things up, uh, you know, a little bit before, uh, you know, before the end of the year, right? We still have, of course, um, you know, tomorrow will be a half day, and then three day weekend. And then, you know, we'll have a full week next week. But one of the things that I want to do next week that we'll be doing is um, is we'll be doing a end of year webinar with with um, a couple members. And we're going to be talking about, you know, what our thoughts are for 2021 and um, and also kind of go over some of the things that that we did in 2020. You know, some some, you know, how we kind of capitalized, you know, the, the two other uh, traders that will be on the webinar next week, which I think we're doing that on Wednesday, uh, have all had successful years, but we all trade a little bit differently. So it'll be really great to kind of, um, you know, talk about what we learned from last year. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about a couple, you know, negative things too that, that happened to us, but, you know, we'll talk about some best practices too, um, which I hope will help traders for the, for the coming year. But, you know, I'm excited for, for the, for the coming year for 2021. So, um, I did register for, for a, uh, for a stock contest too. If anybody has any questions, they can ask me about that in the room for next year. So I'm pumped. And I, you know, at this point, um, you know, whatever the market decides to do for, for the end of the year, I'm, I'm, you know, perfectly happy with um, not really favoring anything except for I I wouldn't mind a little bit of a pullback um, here's you know my trades which I show every day in these videos uh, but um, I talked about Vive yesterday you know if you look at what I did here in the first five to ten minutes of the day you know basically just taking targets you know we're, we're lucky enough to kind of get some of these things that are gapping up or, you know, and, and this week, you know, a lot of names have kind of gapped up into into the um, into the open. So, you know, I took a target in yesterday's Sam Adams trade uh, fuel cell, which, you know, there's call buying in today, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Right? I think that was mentioned on um, as unusual option activity or something like that. I mean, come on. Right. I mean, you know that this thing has been up like huge. Now you're gonna you're gonna buy calls in fuel in fuel cell. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, I'm taking pro I've been taking profits, so I took more profits in this trade. I've got my last piece because I try to leave a runner on, but um, where's my target here in fuel cell? Um, it should be in here someplace. Uh, 12 bucks. And I think I hit another one too. Maybe I forgot to put it in the trades channel, but I think around, I think $13, I think I hit too. So yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, look at these, I refer to these as, well, almost this, I, more so with that FUBU chart. Um, but these are hockey stick patterns, right? Hockey stick patterns, you know, you want to be selling into hockey stick patterns and, um, you know, trying to ride as much as, you know, as far as the, you know, if the pattern is, just, you know, like a hockey stick, like this and then up, you know, you want to be trying to ride as much of the profits, you know, for as long as that, um, you know, the, the stick part um, of the hockey stick for as long as that goes. But 
trying to put on a trade here after the stock and basically a month has gone from two dollars to 13 to put on calls now i think is kind of crazy but um that's just me and everybody's different so i'm taking profits into that um again still holding the the very last piece on um, pins i was lucky to get a target here um i think pins by the way just to kind of review some trades that I'm still in, didn't give me the close that I was looking for. You know, I was hoping that this thing didn't have to close on the absolute high, but would like to see this thing, you know, would have liked to see this thing hang around 74. So we'll see how it goes. If it goes back into this range, it's fine. I'm not going to be happy, but um, I did take a target at 75 and um, we'll see how this materializes because I would like to get the next target up at 82. For now, I'm still holding but um, obviously took a, a target with that. Um, JP Morgan, I completely got out of, just use that as a day trade. Um, hubs, I got out of my last piece of hubs. Um, light, I saw some calls in this, so I gave this one a try. I'm still holding this and, you know, light was mentioned by a member pre-market. Um, I think it's a pretty cool looking chart in terms of just, just breaking out of this. Um, so we'll see if this one works. Spotify was another one that I talked on, talked about on Bloomberg, you know, making, um, there was some calls active in this one today too, you know, bull flag here. So, you know, how I traded this one is not calls outright because I think it's just too expensive and I don't want to be risking a lot of money here. Um, but I put on a call spread, right? Similar to what I did in, um, in Boston beer, or I refer to it as Sam Adams. That one, by the way, also didn't close on that. Also didn't have a great looking close either. Still, nice you know nice move up from where it was um this morning but it just it did give back a lot of those gains from this morning um th th another one that i that i've been in this rmg which is another spac type name uh, i just decided you know 29 dollars paid 17 sure it could go up a little bit more and it could be more of a hockey stick um but <clears throat> i mean this is good enough for me Right. So we talked about this the other day, too. Like, how greedy are you going to be with some of these things? To me, getting in a week ago at, you know, or two weeks ago at $17 and getting 29, that's a gift. And I'm happy to take, uh, you know, take to take some gifts. Right. And and of course, what we try to do is let these runners um you know, let the winners run as much as possible. But for some of these things that I that I view as high speculation like this, I'm perfectly fine. Uh, you know, locking in that type of a gain. All right. Um, and then I also, I you know, I talked about this on Bloomberg, and I almost gave a, a put idea um, for IWM. There's no sell signal in IWM that I see of, other than maybe this gap up here. Right. Some people might call that um what's it called like a not a breakaway gap but i don't know maybe an exhaustion gap i don't know i it's too early to to call that but i do know this iwm is pretty overbought and it just makes sense for me to kind of add or to, you know to even speculate a little bit on a reversion back um you know like i've said before you know sometimes we do get uh the elevator you know stairs up and elevator down so i'm okay speculating with a little bit of puts um, again, I don't do that a lot, but when I think things are, you know, as they say, frothy, um, I'm okay putting on, you know, a little bit of a speculative position. All right. So that's just, you know, what I'm feeling right now. I got out of my last piece of, uh, of API, which, which didn't work. It's, it sold off a little bit too much today, uh, but this was a trade that I hit three targets in. Um, and that's it, you know, just whittling down positions um, at this point and being ready for the next move being you know kind of um you know i'm not going to go down to 100 percent cash going into 2021 but just an area where i'm really comfortable so this is i think um the third day in a row where i've reduced uh some risk and uh i feel great going into you know uh, the next the last week of the year and we'll see if we find some opportunities there as well but um so looking forward to next week's webinar, you know, again, um, you know, this is the, the program that we do at Tribeca Trade Group. Um, I've been now recording the pre-market sessions. Uh, we were talking about too, you know, another thing that I didn't really go over here in this video, but just a couple of things that I talked about pre-market. Now, market breadth was strong today, even though we saw, we saw a weak close and the VIX kind of spike a little bit, you know, into the close. There was a decent MOC for sale today, but, um, 
you know, I think that if you look at some of these these indicators or internals underneath the hood, you know, for example, the McClellan summation index kind of rolling over a little bit, right? So that's also what kind of, you know, backs up my view is that there's some data. This is from Helene Meisler's column this morning. Um, Sentiment Trader was also talking about this. Small caps drive breath figures on NICE to a large extent. When small caps do well, breath is good and vice versa. Um, not today. So so even though like today kind of contradicted that a little bit because the breath was strong today. Um, but th this was from yesterday's post just talking about, you know, negative breath, right? So again, um, for me, just making some adjustments, being smart, and um, you know, realizing what the market is telling me a little bit. All right, guys, have a great night, and um, no video tomorrow. So um, have a wonderful Christmas, Merry Christmas to everybody, and because uh, it'll be the last video before that, and then we'll resume videos next week. Uh, have a great, have a great uh, week as well as uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Thanks, guys.